What's going on everybody, c 4 here, welcome back to the channel, and here today is episode 1 of our Baltimore Ravens Madden 21 Realistic Rebuild. Now, anytime we do rebuilds, it's all 32 teams, there's always probably 5, 6 teams that are just, how am I going to rebuild them? They're already very good, very well built, and you know, it's not going to be fun, but anytime something does happen to those teams that make it maybe a little bit more interesting to rebuild, I'm going to jump on the opportunity. So unless you've been living under a rock, you should be well aware what's going on with the Baltimore Ravens right now. Can't play the game on Thanksgiving. Lamar Jackson's going down. Craziness. Absolute craziness. Seems like it's all tied back to the strength and conditioning coach. It's, it's kind of worrisome because they have a very much at-risk player in Mark Andrews. It, it's insanity. And I feel like 100% get out of the way. Everyone recover. 100%. That's, that's, that's top priority without a shadow of a doubt but it does make things a little bit more interesting for the Baltimore Ravens when it comes to a rebuild and I thought there's a bunch of different ways I could do this because like I said with these realistic rebuilds it gives me opportunities to kind of throw in storylines and what have you and I was thinking it'd be too extreme just to like forfeit the remainder of the season because assuming everything fully goes well in terms of recovery you know it's going to be a two three week at the most type issue so I was like, well, maybe we just kind of do something where we work in RG3 because Lamar Jackson, who knows what's going to happen. I want to be positive. I want to put this positivity out into the world that within the, you know, at the end of the two weeks, everything's going to kind of go back to normal. Hopefully that strength and conditioning coach gets fired. That's the only big change that happens. So what I'm going to do here today as we start here in week 12, I think 100% this game should be forfeited. I 100% firmly believe Baltimore should forfeit this game. It is their fault, and their fault only within someone in an organization why they can't play Pittsburgh. And I feel like Pittsburgh shouldn't be punished. They should not, you know, get dicked around or anything like that. It should be a forced loss, 11-0 for Pittsburgh. Obviously, now you guys start talking about asterisks and stuff like that. But, I mean, the Ravens should be punished. So what we're going to do here today, I mean, 6-4. and four. Ravens have definitely sizzled out just a little bit here. What we are going to do is we're going to make an assumption... That over the next two weeks, the, uh, the 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 Ravens forfeit. So against the Steelers, against the Cowboys, that's annoying. I'll tell you right, that's not going to probably happen in real life. I'm going to say that Baltimore 100% should forfeit the game against the Steelers. And then in the Dallas game, you know, we'll probably have to go with RG3. There'll be a bunch of backups. Guys might not be cleared. Some guys may be cleared. But for the sake of this rebuild and make it interesting, we are going to forfeit week 12 and week 13 and then from week 14 onwards see what we can do to salvage the year i feel like that's the most sense it gives us the most intrigue and it gives us a chance if things don't go well for the ravens to get a pretty goddamn high pick for the 2021 draft and then years four th two three four five so on and so forth we can become the baltimore ravens that we know that they usually are in madden 21 except we have a unreal 2021 first round pick that can help build our roster so all that being said, that's kind of what we're going at. I like the fact that it's realistic came from the sense that already Hollywood Brown's upset because that's kind of what he is in real life right now. Not very happy. We'll import here the 2021 draft. 2022 draft, probably about halfway done. So sooner than later, probably for the back end of these rebuilds, the realistic rebuilds, I'll be able to use two years of draft classes. But starting here looking uh, for the Baltimore Ravens, positions that they really kind of need to look at. We'll work at wide receiver here. I think we'll grab, uh, we'll look at the first four, but we will scout more wide receivers. I think that's the spot they need to go. I think they absolutely could look on the interior of the offensive line. Wyatt Davis, Creed Humphrey in the first round. You could even look at Trey Smith in the second round out of Tennessee. Uh, Josh Myers at center here out of Ohio State. Linderbaum from Iowa, the redshirt sophomore. All really, really good options. I think we also probably can look at edge rusher. That'd be, that'd be another spot that we could go. We could look at linebacker to find maybe someone that's a little bit more suitable to play long-term next to Patrick Queen, like Joe Asai from Texas, would be an exceptional pick. Uh, second, I mean, there, there's some there's some other secondary needs, but I'd say for primary needs for Baltimore here would be adding in and bringing in another wide receiver or improving the interior of the offensive line. But let's just, let's just rip the bandit off. Get through it here. What I'm going to do is uh, we'll turn injuries off so that no new injuries will pop up. But we will force loss week 12 and week 13. And we'll be right back for week 14. Bottom half of the season stretch for Baltimore to try to find a way to scrape and claw into the playoffs. 
All right, the two weeks of hell are up. Baltimore now 6-6. Six and six. The rest of the teams in the AFC North did not slow down. Pittsburgh still undefeated 12-0. Browns. This just doesn't feel right. Browns are 9-3. and three. So, yeah. Well, now let's just let's get into the rebuild as like we were. I have no idea what really the Baltimore Ravens roster is looking like. As you can see here for the playoffs, we are currently outside of that playoff picture. Miami has been able to pull ahead there. The Raiders are pull ahead. So we got some work to do. We absolutely have some work to do. But now the team is healthy, roaring, and ready to go. Let's meet the Baltimore Ravens roster. Obviously, at quarterback here, the cover athlete, superstar X Factor, trust, big trust, Lamar Jackson, superstar X Factor, 23 years old, absolute superstar in Madden, in real life. He, it's kind of He's not as shiny as he used to be, I guess. But again, like I said at the top of the video, I mean, I am a Lamar Jackson fan. I used to go out of my way to try to watch Lamar Jackson when he was at Louisville. And uh, I'm glad that he's had the success that he's had so far in the NFL, but I almost feel like I don't need to change OCs already, or, or yeah. they got to do something. They got to do something, because right now, Lamar Jackson, unfortunately, is feeling a little bit stagnant in his career progression, so it is what it is. But for the sake of this rebuild, I mean, stud. We have an absolute stud at quarterback. Running back, we have Mark Ingram, the veteran, 80, but more so, I'm going down here, you got, you know, Gus the Bus. Remember, he was doing his thing at Miami, and then he transferred to Rutgers. He was solid. But the guy that I'm keen on is J.K. Dobbs. J.K. Dobbs does look very good. I think he should probably be running back one right now for the Baltimore Ravens. 5'10", 209, hidden dev trade 77. For the sake of this rebuild, he is going to be our running back one just to maximize and capitalize on that dev trade. And, uh, you know, it only takes him 4,600 XP to go up an uh, overall point, which is very much important. But generally, this is a very, very good running back room. And uh, I'm happy with it, man. It's good. It's going to be something where we have probably the best, one of the best fullbacks in the NFL. Riker, two-way player. Remember, like, in the preseason, you'd get, like, a sack, and then you'd be, like, a pancake block for a touchdown in the ensuing drive. It's awesome. So, for Riker here, I mean, he's either, he must be, like, the I think he's, like, the second highest overall fullback. Who's, like, probably use checks first. He might be second. So, that's good. Uh, wide receivers. This is definitely an area that they need to get better at. Uh, obviously, we have channel legend James Prochet here, so he's most likely going to be here for the full five years. Uh, Devin Duvernay looks very nice as a rookie, 71 with a hidden dev trait. They have Miles Boykin, who's a great height, weight, speed type wide receiver, but with that dev trait, who knows really what his ceiling is going to be. Hollywood Brown, speed for days, 79 star dev. But I, I definitely still get the idea that Baltimore Raven fans in real life anyway still need a wide receiver. For the sake of Madden, it might not be a primary need because I think with the dev trade here for Duvernay, Brown is on star dev. He probably he probably still could use another wide receiver. Yeah, it makes sense. I don't know if I could justify spending a first round pick on a wide receiver, depending on what the draft board looks like. But it's definitely a group that I'm not seeing a legit wide receiver one. So we need to we need to go to achieve that. Mark Andrews at tight end. Mandrews, 88 star dev looks good. You have Nick Boyle as super star dev. Uh, which is weird that he's a higher dev trait than Mark Andrews. I get it because he's a good blocker and they gave him just, you know, pretty much uh, blocking abilities from that standpoint. It kind of makes sense in the same way that, they, you know, they gave superstar abilities to return men. But uh, it's, it's it's a really good tight end room with uh, Andrews and Nick Boyle. So long, and both of them, I mean, Andrews for sure, for the full, full five years, he's going to be good. He's going to be in his prime. Boyle, a little bit less so, but I'm not worried about it. We have Ronnie Stanley at left tackle. Orlando Brown Jr.'s left tackle for right now, but next year, when Ronnie Stanley returns from injury, we can kick Orlando Brown Jr. back out to right tackle, and we'll be just sitting pretty on that that part of the offensive line. We have Bozeman at guard, we have Skur at center, and Tyree Phillips at right. So absolutely, interior offensive line, like we were kind of scouting, is the biggest priority for the Baltimore Ravens. And I feel comfortable and confident that I'll be able to get one of the top interior linemen with that first round pick. Uh, and again, if not, then we can you know see what's available at wide receiver. On the defensive side, we have Derek Wolf, a defensive end, 30. Probably more so going to be looking for a, a long-term replacement there. Same with Clayus Campbell on the other side. I mean, Matt Abuke, I liked him at a Texas A&M. I thought it was good value. Obviously, the Baltimore Ravens front office, outstanding at pretty much everything they do, but especially drafting. Long-term, Matt Abuke might be able to develop into something, but, uh, you know, again, another position we probably can't really ignore if there's a really good player in the draft to bring in a 3-4 defensive end. Same with inside. Everyone on this front is pretty old. Brandon Williams, 31. He is an 85, good run stuffer there with a dev trait, but they're old. It's an old front three that needs a shot of, you know, injection. Give him an injection of youth here, just a little bit. We have Judon, an outside linebacker, 82 with the star dev, I believe. 
Uh, Bowser, kind of a little bit of a slow burn, but he's starting to catch on just a little bit. 25 years old out of Houston, so that's not too, too shabby, but Judon is going to be looking for a new contract. Inside, we have LJ Fort, who we decided was not good enough in Philadelphia, but I guess he's good enough to start for the Baltimore Ravens. But uh, long term, yeah, Patrick Queen, 74, with that hidden dev trait. We have Malik Harrison, rookie, got a 70. I'll probably actually just rock and roll with those two guys as my starting middle linebackers and see if that's a position we can just write right off that we don't need to worry about drafting anybody. Uh, right inside linebacker, they got Yannick Ngakwe. Got him in a trade from the Minnesota Vikings. McPhee, Jalen Ferguson. Um, again, much like Judon, I don't know what our Tyler Cat's going to look like. So we might have to pick or choose between Ngakwe and Judon. And if that's the case, I'm probably going to go Ngakwe. But Judon might be a little bit more affordable because he's a little bit older. I don't know. We'll wait and see what those contracts look like. In the secondary, Marlon Humphrey. They used him a lot more in the slot this year, and he has been outstanding. He is a very, very good cornerback. 92 with a superstar dev. Marcus Peters, I think this, in my opinion, is the best one-two punch in the secondary in the NFL. I'm a huge Marcus Peters fan. 87 with a star dev. I honestly think he probably should have a superstar. In my opinion, he's the best ball-hawking corner in the NFL. Uh, Jimmy Smith, 82 from a veteran standpoint. Tavon Young, when healthy, we might have someone that we can just plug and play in the slot. 77 with a star dev. When he comes back from his injury, he'll be 27. So it's a guy that could very well be in our long-term plans to pair with Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey. Uh, not much youth there at the secondary. Free safety, Deshaun Elliott uh, having a little bit of a breakout here. 78 has a star dev as well. Uh, yeah, you know, I guess that's what happens when Earl Thomas does weird things with his brother. You got to get him off the roster, and when you're the Ravens and you have comfortability with who you draft and you trust your evaluations, good things like this seem to happen. So Deshaun Elliott looks like a stud for us long-term, and at strong safety, we have Chuck Clark, 77 Normal dev, but knowing, you know, anytime you have a normal dev outside linebacker or a normal dev safety, they tend to go up dev trait or get a fair amount of dev trait scenarios. So I'm not overly worried about Chuck Clark there. Hopefully we'll hit a dev. We have the best kicker in the NFL in Justin Tucker. Sam, I'm not going to say that last name because it'll get me demonetized at 38. Maybe we look somewhere else for the pun. Let's see what we got here for contracts. Very quickly, who wants to get paid? Who are we keeping? Oh my God. Okay, well, let's just see. How much money do we got? We actually have a lot of money. Um, probably would rather Ngakwe. Who wants more money? Uh, you know, it, we pretty much have to pick or choose. Judon or Ngakwe. Ngakwe's younger. So we will hammer out a deal. Of probably about 87 million bucks to get the job done here for Ngakwe. Get him to sign on the dotted line. And then uh, we'll, we'll be a little bit conscientious of their salary cap because do, we do have a lot of young players that need new contracts. Lamar Jackson's contract will be coming up sooner than later in this rebuild. We need to kind of prioritize those things versus getting 32-year-old Jimmy Smith, 38-year-old punter. Judon is about to be 29 and probably won't get much higher in terms of overall. Same with Derek Wolf and all these guys. So we'll prioritize landing in Gakwe and saving the rest of our money. So I'm thinking, I'm looking at this. I kind of just want to play one game here. Because the whole idea is kind of to struggle. But if there's one game that we would have to win to kick things off, to go on a late season push, it would be finding a way, much like they did earlier in the year, to destroy the Cleveland Browns. The Browns are at 9-3. and three. We can win, go to 7-6, and six, throw, a, you know, throw a wrench into things here for the wild card. It's not a foregone conclusion yet. We're back healthy, better than ever. So we're going to hop in here, play the Cleveland Browns, and hopefully beat the brakes off them. All right, I've actually not played with Lamar Jackson at any point this year. So let's see how cheesy he is. I mean, going up against Miles Garrett, that's always going to be a little bit difficult. But with ease, we get the first down on our first scramble with Lamar. Oh, Jesus. Read option. Let's do this once. Let's do this once and never do it again. I used to do it all the time. Florida Gators and NCAA. That was really the last time I ran a read option. Or Michael Vick. Yeah, Michael Vick. Well, that's a great read. That's a great read, and we fumble it. That was a great read, though. Third down, Nate. Who wants it? Oh, wow. Wow. Larry Ogunjobi gets the sack. Not very impressive first drive for the Baltimore Ravens here. Do we have offensive linemen? Lamar executed slants. Hollywood Brown. Oh, my God. Okay, we're getting absolutely... That's terrible. That's a pick. We are getting... At Miles Garrett is blowing free... On almost every single play. Oh, Andrews wide open again in the middle of the field. A little bit late. 
from Lamar Jackson. But it's a gain of 27. First and goal on the five. Got a very unhappy man right here at wide receiver. We're going to try and make him happy. Hollywood Brown gets the go-ahead touchdown for the Baltimore Ravens. Full kudos, though, to our defense holding Cleveland to two straight field goals. Cannon. Always said about Lamar Jackson. Absolute cannon of an arm. Love how he just, at full strength, 40 yards max. But did I get hit? Cannon, man. Absolute cannon. A rocket. All right. No more deep balls today. Oh, there we go. We got Amp. We got him, Andrews. We got him, Andrews. Up to the five. My gosh, bus. The bus. Go. Oh, he's in. That couldn't any be more. Oh, that's a touchdown. Laying on the body of 68. Well, I'm pretty sure he's dead now. Third and goal. Third and goal. Can we go to Patrick Queen? No, we'll just scramble him with Lamar. Why is all right, Patrick Queen, now offensive playmaker. But Lamar Jackson gets a very much needed touchdown. We're only down, we're only down three. Only down three, fourth quarter to play. God, this defense is awesome. I was about to say Lamar is the worst deep ball I've seen in Madden so far this year, but that was nice. That was a dart. In full goal range, some touchy tie this up, or we just slam it to Hollywood Brown. We get the second touchdown of the game. Baltimore with a lead here midway through the fourth quarter. Oh, Duvernay, middle of the field. Devin Duvernay, the speedster out of Texas. Feeling a little overpowered. Gotta be honest, feeling a little overpowered. First and goal on the two. What are these play calls? First goal on the two. All right, let's go four verts. Four verts what we want to run. Probably should be trying to chew a little bit of clock here. As always, though, this is where I'm going to be good with Lamar Jackson because I can just scramble if there's not there. But it is there, Mark Andrews. Soft coverage from the safety. Go ahead, touchdown. But I feel like maybe that's what the Browns wanted to happen so they can have the ball last and try and score and win. They don't. Baltimore's going to 7-6. and six. Hey, garbage time. J.K. Dobbins touchdown. you love to see it. So overall... Three touchdowns, three picks. We broke even with Lamar Jackson, over 300 yards, 274. I think we had 50-some yards rushing. Uh, over 100 yards for Hollywood Brown. Get Devin Duvernay involved. It's a big victory. Hopefully, with the remaining games, Baltimore can go on a run. And we could salvage this season. If not, a high draft pick's not the worst thing that could happen. All right, we got 2-11 and 11 Jags. Like, this has to be a win. In Madden Sim, I do notice that when you play bad teams like that, you'll find a way to lose. I, I, that's just kind of how it is. Doesn't mean it's right. But let's see if we can start the week off right by getting Ngakwe laid out on a six-year deal, which we do. And, like, you know, I... Gus Edwards. I, it just doesn't make sense. It's bad. In real life, I, I think Gus Edwards is a great addition. He's a great piece to have in that Ravens backfield. And him long term to be kind of the Mark Ingram role to J.K. Dobbs would be smart. But the reality of it is, in Madden, you, you just you don't need to you don't need that many. Like, what's the con? He wants like a all right. Screw it. We'll just sign him. We'll screw it. We'll just sign him. We'll sign him. We got a breakout player here for Hollywood Brown. We're gonna get back up to his superstar dev, which he was last year. And three touchdowns, 150 yards against the Jacksonville. I mean, you look at that as the Ravens. That. Very well, probably should be 3-0 to finish the year. All right? Joe Burrow's no longer there for the Bengals. Jags are in a tank. Can we follow that in the sim? Probably not. But we, we get a nice win there, 24-10, and we're in the playoffs. We are now the seventh seed. Baltimore has leapfrogged the Oakland Raiders, and by Oakland Raiders, I mean Las Vegas Raiders to get in. Hollywood Brown did not get the job done today. No dev trade upgrade for him. We have the 5-9. Now the Giants might be a little, a little bit more interesting because the Giants have kind of caught fire a little bit. You know their defense is playing well. That could be a potential loss here. But let's just keep working on our players. Uh, Duvernay, seventy-two. We might as well get him more so into the scheme fit. Route runners never bad to have more route running. Those are just some of the old heads. Now we have the Giants, week sixteen. Hey, week sixteen. <sighs> 
field goal. Field goal loss to the Giants. We fall to 8-7. and seven. At least the Steelers finally lost. They're not going to go perfect 16-0, which is good. Um, I think we're still in. Nope. All right. Raiders leapfrogged us again. So it's going to be between us and the Vegas Raiders. Week 17, Cincinnati. Got to be a victory. 3-11-1. Got to be a victory here. Let's help out. We'll make Lamar a 92. What did he start the game as? He was a 93, 94, somewhere in that range. Obviously, he's regressed just a little bit. But we're getting pretty close to at least that base starting rating for really next year once the full, full year of the rebuild starts. Like seeing Ngakwe go up a couple points here, given the fact that we paid him an ass ton of money. Week 17, playoffs on the line against the 3-11 Bengals. Win and we're maybe in. Win and it doesn't matter. Win and it doesn't matter. We were in the playoffs for one week. We lost to the Giants. Who, Giants won the NFC East. Four seed. Embarrassing. We lost to the Giants and the Raiders and Titans. Six and seven. <sighs> Fucking Giants. Nine and seven. The Ravens finish. Kind of unbiasedly. Ravens are probably a 9-7 team this year. If I'm going to be honest with you. But well, that doesn't make it any less annoying. Got James Prochet going up two points because he's damn straight he does because he's that damn good. Um, let's look at the stats. Let's look at how everything finished statistically this season for Baltimore. We'll get into the offseason. My plan right now is to do the draft because it's going to be a little bit shorter of an episode because we're not doing a full year. But I uh, also want to make sure we got... Th what? Three skill points for Devin Duvernay. Don't know how that happened, but he's, he's eating. Absolute feast. Might as well work on his route running. Would love to get three straight overalls, but not. But we'll get two, hopefully. Get them up to a 74. I mean, that's probably like the, coming from college to the pros, your route running is really what you probably want most of your receivers to work on, unless like they're Jerry Judy or something. We'll go uh, route running here for Hollywood Brown, getting up to an 80. And Marcus Peters, man-to-man -man corner, 88. Like it. Is he locked into a long-term contract? Did they pay him or not? I feel like they did. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. Statistically, 2020, Baltimore Ravens. Reigning defending MVP, Lamar Jackson. 15-1 Pittsburgh. God damn, that was good. Uh, 29 touchdowns to 12 interceptions. 62% completion percentage. It's not, it's not the end of the world for Lamar. A little bit of a down year, though. Leading the team, 689 rushing yards, four touchdowns, 650 and four for J.K. Dobbins. That's the last time we've seen Lamar have that because we started with real stats. And next year, once we get into the Madden Sim, I, I will be surprised if he goes for over... 400 yards at the best. It's, it's not great. It should work better. More antennas. Your cover athlete should be represented as such in your sim. But of course, these are mountains that we're asking Madden apparently to move. Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown, led the team 74 catches, a thousand yards and eight touchdowns. Seven and nine for Mandrews. Six and seven for Willie Sneed. Four and one for Devin Duvernay. Okay. Yeah. Definitely could see the need for adding another wide receiver. Patrick Queen, the rookie out of LSU, first round draft pick. 115 tackles, four TFLs, four sacks. An interception. It's a great rookie year for him. Ten sacks, Yannick Ngakwe. Seven and a half, Judon. Six and a half, Calais Campbell. Three picks, Marcus Peters leading the team. Marlon Humphrey with two. Uh, overall, we have the 22nd offense in the NFL. Probably have close to a top 10 defense. Except for 10. Exactly. MVP went to Kyler Murray. Lamar Jackson coming in at number 10. Offensive player of the year went to Patrick Mahomes. Lamar coming in at six. Defense player of the year went to Miles Garrett. Patrick Queen coming in at number six. Offensive rookie there went to Justin Herbert. J.K. Dobbins at eight. Defensive rookie there going to Patrick Queen. Obviously, he had a sensational season. Uh, best quarterback, Lamar coming in at number eight. Best running back, probably not going to have anything. Wide receiver, Hollywood Brown at six. Best lineman, Ronnie Stanley. Who, Ronnie Stanley who didn't play the second half of the season. Still coming in at number six. Not broken at all. Uh, linebacker, Patrick Queen at number three. Gawkway at 7, Judon at 8. So we got a lot, of, a lot of respect for our linebacker position. DB, Marcus Peters coming in at 7. And for kicker, Justin Tucker. Runner up, the Jason Sanders of the Miami Dolphins. Okay. So we had some good individual success, team success, given the COVID stuff. You know? Who knows? But we're sitting here 9-7, and seven, crash and burn, have a higher draft pick. Let's kind of enjoy this offseason for what it's worth because next year we start... The Baltimore Raven dominance. I'm confused. I'm very confused. Uh, Chuck Clark has a breakout scenario. And it's the Pro Bowl. 
Do I assume he made the Pro Bowl? Um, well, we got Reichert as a starting fullback. Uh... Matt Judon, outside linebacker. Gawkway, outside linebacker. Corner one, Marcus Peters. Marlon Humphrey, corner four. Crochet and Duvernay were... Okay, so we got a breakout scenario for a guy that's not playing. Let's see how this happens. Does this work out well? Oh, it doesn't. Nothing even happens. Cool. All right, double FU, double middle fingers coming our way as the Browns won the Super Bowl. And Matt Judon who we decided to go with the Anakin Gawkway. Judon just went up Superstar Dev. I didn't even check if we had any uh, Dev trade increases. Hopefully in Gawkway Superstar as well. Because if not, I would hate to have made that wrong decision. Uh, awesome. Gawkway didn't go up Dev trade. Cool, 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 cool. Awesome, sick, unreal, happy with that. So entering into free agency, we, we had a good salary cap, 70-some million dollars. Again, I'm not going to blow it all because Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, for sure. Those are two guys that are going to have to get paid. Orlando Brown's going to have to get paid. But when interesting things happen, I'm going to have to make interesting moves. First up, for punter, we need a punter. So I'm going to go after Mac Hack, who formerly, I think, of the Dolphins. But he's a start at punter. Sure. One last position I have to worry about. Juju is available. Big rivalry. Pittsburgh Steelers. Yada, yada, yada. I think Juju Smith-Schuster is a perfect style wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. Loves the block. Hard nose type guy. Feel like you can go Duvernay Brown on the outside, put him in the slot. You can have him on the outside. Either way, I have at least gone forth with the highest bid that I that I felt comfortable making. Uh, we're first place. They kind of add this God of War, and by God of War, Fog of War, whatever. They do. You don't see the, You don't get to see the total points. But I offered a, a ninety-seven total point here. Fog of War bid first place over the Colts and the Raiders. Hopefully we get it. If not, I mean, I'm looking at the rest of the upgrades. There are some upgrades to be had, but nothing that I was like, oh, I have to jump all over that for sure. I would have liked to bring in a D end here, but maybe we just gamble with Matabuki. There's no real three, four D ends available that have any real upside. Like I was looking down here and yeah, there's not much. There's, I mean, passing on, maybe that would be a signing that the Raiders would make. Like a little bit of an underrated signing. Kind of a, I think it was like a highest round pick from the Kansas City Chiefs out of Villanova. I'll throw a little bit off on him just so we have some depth chart in case I whiff in the draft. But that'll be a spot we try to look at in the draft. Because even at D-tackle, like these are guys that you could be able to kick out. There's just no one that has like an ideal age. Look at this guy, Tershawn Wharton. Maybe this guy? Way too much of a signing bonus. See what he can do, potentially, if we can bring him in. But other than that, man, the big get would be Juju. See if we can get it. If not, I didn't overpay. It would just be interesting. Let's see how it plays out. And everybody jumping on the opportunity to play the Baltimore Ravens. You got Wharton and Passignan. Guys can battle up for DM. We got Hack, and there is the whale. We caught it in. We reeled it in. The big whale. Juju Smith-Schuster has signed. That is huge. Altering the landscape of the AFC North. And now we can prioritize going best interior offensive alignment available in the first round of the 2021 draft. All right, well, we have the option here before the draft to pick up, kick the can, pick up that fifth-year option on Lamar Jackson contract, which we are going to do. I kept thinking Mark Andrews was the first-round tight end. They got Hayden Hurst instead. What a mistake that was. But, hey, we got one more year of not having to pay Lamar Jackson, like, 200 million bucks. All right, in the first round, we have the 18th pick, which is it's not like this whole thing ended up yielding us an insane draft selection, but... It's it's solid. Um, well, Wyatt Davis is off the board. All the top interior linemen are gone. Hey, awesome. And there's a Rondale Moore is still there. So clearly a wide receiver if we didn't bring in Juju. Okay. Um, well, Trey Smith did get a first round grade. So we don't like anything else. We can just go Trey Smith. Uh, Quincy Roche actually could... Could come in and be outside edge rusher for us right away. Quiddy Pay makes sense on that front. Barmore would make sense on that front. Makes a lot of sense for the Baltimore Ravens. They love their Alabama players. Uh, edge rushers. Osai from Texas would actually be a hell of a pick. Caleb Farley's still there. Farley, one of the best corners in... Is it Farley or Farley? Farley. It looks like, like Chris Farley. 
greatest comedian, funniest man of all time. Uh, but again, you know, we, I like our corners are solid, man. Sean Wade would be a great fit. Could be a slot corner. Marcus Peters, Sean Wade. Like then it's just it's it's all about maximizing our assets, right? And, and like when I'm looking at the back end of the defense, Ta- I think Tavon Young is 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 good enough, right? He'll come back seven weeks, seventy seven star dev, only twenty seven. Like it, it's it's future proofing a position that we might not even have to worry about. We could win a Super Bowl with those guys before contracts and age and regression all become a little bit of an issue. So absolutely need an interior lineman. Um, could use a at least at edge we could kick over Jalen Ferguson see what he can do like we might have a chance he's normal dev right he might go up star dev be 26 star dev we can work with that I'm thinking I'm thinking we'll go out and we'll grab We'll get Barmore. We'll get Barmore. Flip him into a nice dev trait. 22 in true value. Get him a pick 18. 73 hidden dev. We'll kick him. He'll be one of our defensive ends. And then hopefully a quitty pay or or a Trey Smith will be there in the second round. Not going to lie. Uh, Osai going right there is annoying because that absolutely would have been our pick here at 18. Um, and there's wide outs. Don't really need wide outs. Caden Stern's strong safety. Clark is... Clark is more than solid enough that we probably don't need to burn a pick there. We still have J.C. Horn, Joe Horn's kid, second rounder. Could sneak into the first round. Shaq Tony. But it's like, do I really, like, can we can we just rock and roll? Even, you know, Rasheed from Oregon State's a really good edge rusher. So it's Tryon from Washington. There's a lot of good 3-4 outside linebackers. Hey, Owosu Karoma, middle linebacker, also pretty goddamn talented. Of course, we didn't have these guys scouted, which is less than ideal. Um... Man, let's uh, do it. We'll grab Shaka Tony. I already know people hate it because my draft class. Two dev trade players. Let's go. All right, draft recap. Two hidden devs right off the rip. Barmore, who we're going to move right away. We'll make him a right a defensive. Or actually, we'll make him a left defensive end. So that Calais Campbell, right? I'm pretty sure I didn't see him retire. So we got Barmore in the first round. He goes down to a 72 hidden depth. We got Shaq Tony, who we're going to make a left outside linebacker. a right outside linebacker is Yannick Ngakwe. Hidden dev out of Penn State. Probably has a potential to go in the first round as well. But Penn State's just so bad, he could potentially slip. We got Jordan Williams, defensive tackle from Clemson. 6'3", 3'10". Another playmaker that we're most likely... We're just going to kick inside. And we'll actually... And we'll keep him in D-tackle for now, just because we don't have a lot of depth behind Brandon Williams. you got Kyrus Tonga from BYU, another true nose tackle. He's only 65 overall, and a little bit, I kind of shit pick, Al Blades Jr. from Miami, 61. He is a scheme fit, which helps. No dev trade or anything crazy like that. But uh, hey, at least we hit on our first two guys. But still, glaring omission, we weren't unable to improve the interior of that offensive line, which really was a top priority. So we are now caught up to the beginning of the 2021 season where the rebuild truly will now begin. But that is for another episode. I will leave us with where our roster's at. We're at 82 a overall with an 84 offense, 80 defense. Looking at quickly at the depth chart. Things that have changed for the better. I suppose it's probably easier to look at it this way. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, no real changes. Uh, we do have some good, easy cap cuts that we can make. I'm saying we can free up like 4 million bucks, getting rid of Mark Ingram, end of it. Yeah, sadly, end of an era. Uh, we brought in Juju Smith-Suster at wide receiver. We now have a healthy Ronnie Stanley. Let's improve this line. Let's do this. Generate best lineup because I definitely want to kick Orlando Brown back out to tackle. In tier, we're going Bozeman, Makari, and Ben Powers. Less than ideal. For sure, less than ideal. Going to have to do a lot of outside runs to help everything out. Uh, we had Andrew. Like, I honestly think maybe Boyle would be a higher rated guard than Ben Powers at this point with his blocking ability. But it is what it is. But yeah, we'll be going J.K. Dobbins as our starter at running back. Juju, Miles, Brown, and Devin DuVernay will be our wideouts. And clearly, Channel Legend James Prochet will be there. On the defensive side of the ball, well, the front three, we got Barmore, Williams, and um, I thought we're going to go Wharton. He's 70. But I guess passed on his 71. He's a little bit higher. I don't know. I'll figure that out at the defensive end spot. Linebacker, we're going to go Ferguson over... T- uh, no, we'll go Tony. We'll maximize the dev trait. 
Patrick Queen, Malik Harrison, and Yannick Ngakwe make up our linebacking core. We have Deshaun Elliott, Marlon Humphrey, Tavon Young, Marcus Peters, and Clark. And another channel engine, much like James Perche, Nigel football team, I guess he's a member of the Baltimore Ravens, so I can't wait to get him out there, at least on special teams in some capacity. So that will do it for part one here of the Baltimore Ravens Madden 21 Realistic Rebuild. As always, guys, if it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Part two will probably be Monday. So, because uh, I think tomorrow we'll have an Eagles episode. Sunday, I'll do another mock draft. Now the Eagles suck and have a top 10 pick. It's much more interesting for me to do that. So yeah, we'll probably think about Monday. We'll have part two of this rebuild. So I hope to see you guys then. Thank you for watching. And until next time, it's C4. Say peace out.